Hi there, welcome to Key Stage 1. Today, me and Mrs Horton are going to do a short presentation about Key Stage 1. Also in our phase are Mrs Gumray and Miss Davenport. So things your child needs each day in school. We require the children to bring a reading book in their reading record and also a water bottle. So a reminder about uniform expectations. Children need to wear a red or a white polo shirt, a red jumper, cardigan or fleece, a black or grey trousers or a skirt, red or white checked summer dress, and black shoes. Also no jewellery except for stud earrings and watches. And please make sure all items are clearly named inside the label where possible. Hi, so PE is a bit different this year, asking children to come in their uniforms to school on Mondays for Mr Ancliffe's and my class and on Fridays for Miss Davenport. Um, just a reminder that whilst plimsolls are perfectly acceptable, the children are playing outside in their kits all day, so to make sure that they are wrapped up warm and maybe trainers are going to be a better option this year for PE. Again, if all things can be clearly named, if we do lose them, it's much easier to find the owner again. So things you can do to help at home to make sure your child's ready for the school day. So making sure they've got everything they need. If they come into school feeling prepared, they're going to have a much more positive attitude towards the day, feeling ready to learn. Listening to your child read four times a week is so important to give children the opportunity to practice the books the new words that they learn to be able to commit those words to their long-term memory, which means it helps them to read books in the future. So that's so important. We, we also ask that you practice their spellings. So the children, once they're given a spelling book, their spellings are in there. If you can practice them on a separate piece of paper, we will test them in their spelling book so you can see what they've got wrong and what they've got right. So it's much easier for you to keep a track of what's going wrong for your child or what they're doing well. Um, there's no other homework expectations this year. That's all we're asking you to do. Um, so listening to your child read. So a few little pointers on getting the best out of your child and getting your best out of those time you spend together listening um, to them read. Finding a comfortable place with as few distractions as possible, if you can, fully appreciate. When you've got a busy household, that's not always easy. Um, most important is creating your child as an independent reader. So letting them fetch their book, open their book, turn the pages themselves, point to the words themselves. All of those things give them ownership over their own reading and gives them, um, they see themselves as a reader. So one strategy is to use the phonics, which is what we teach in schools, the sounding words out but there are some words that you can't do that with like said and they need to be learned on sight so they see the word they know what it says um, and you might have to tell them that if they don't know it other strategies you can use are looking at the pictures for clues so words like sandwich or trampoline you wouldn't expect a five or six year old to necessarily be able to read that word but if there's a picture of a sandwich or a picture of a trampoline it can help them to work that out as well so it's your child being able to use all the clues available and develop independent strategies to solve tricky words themselves. So how you can help with spelling. So we're putting spellings on a sticker inside their orange books. So each week they'll do a written spelling test. So that means when they're practicing them, they do need to practice writing them down ready for the test, but not in the orange book. Um, some words, so especially in year one and at the beginning of year two, we concentrate on phonics, which is the sounds that the words make. So a word like coat, we would break down into k, o, t, coat. And that's how we'd learn to say it and spell it. Other words, as they move further on in year two, follow a spelling rule like adding a prefix. So happy turns into unhappy. Some words, as I've mentioned, just need to be learned, like said. 
We can't sound them out, we just need to know how to spell them. To help you understand this a bit more, you can Google high frequency words. They're your words that can't be sound, sounded, out, sounded out, whether you have to learn the whole word. Or also if you Google phase three or phase four or phase five phonics, it'll give you some help and some tips as to the types of words they're learning. Currently in my class, we're towards the end of phase three now, moving into phase four. I know that Mrs. Gomery and Miss Davenport are beginning work on phase three, and I know Mr. Ancliffe's working on phase five phonics. So that's where we are at the moment. Finally, we're using Spelling Shed, which was being used during lockdown. So those of you who are in year two this year got to use that in year one. Your children will be coming home with a login and they should have got that already. And that just is a fun way of practicing spellings. But just remember they need to write their spellings down in the test. So make sure they get that extra practice. In maths, we use a mastery approach, which covers all basics. And children will practice fluency. They'll be able to explain and problem solve. So this is reasoning uh, through different questions to broaden their depth and understanding in maths. Uh, year twos will also be expected to know their twos, their fives and their ten times tables. In reading, we as teachers try to listen to the children as often as possible, definitely once a week. And in year two we do whole class reading, this is where we work on strategies such as things like retrieval, inference um, and um, things like authorial intent as well. And then in year one and the mixed year one, two class, they do reading activities each day to also help develop and, um, and work on their reading skills. So in writing, so writing is based around talk for writing. It's a strategy that's very popular uh, throughout schools in the UK. And we base our uh, writing around topics and books, some high quality texts uh, within our um, year groups. Children memorise model text to learn the structure and key vocabulary, which they then are encouraged to use within their own writing. So just to let you know that at the end of year one, there is a standardised national test that tests their phonics and their phonic knowledge. They, they have to read the words. Included in that are real words and also some nonsense words. So the idea is they can just sound the word out even though it isn't a real word. Each week we will teach two, three or four phonemes in class in year one um, to get them ready for this test at the end of the year and the phonemes that we teach also link into their spelling so they kind of get it twice. Children that don't reach the expected standard at the end of year one will be expected to sit that test again at the end of year two and repeat the phonics curriculum when they're in year two. All the year two children have daily spelling lessons linked to their rule or the phoneme that they're learning and at the end of year two there is a spelling test included in the SATs. So this year we'll be covering six themes across the school. So the whole school are doing the same six themes that you can see outlined here. Then within each phase, we've taken that theme and then uh, made that appropriate for our age group, our year groups. So at the moment, we're contrasting the UK and India. I'm sure you've been hearing quite a lot about Ganesha. I know the children in my class really like Ganesha. And as you can see through the year, we've got a variety of history topics and science topics and geography topics. And within that, we bring in all the other elements of the curriculum. So we'll bring in music and art and design technology and, and, and all the other subjects. Finally, we do know that at the moment, Derbyshire County Council are requiring that all year two children sit the SATs at the end of Key Stage 1. But obviously, as things are at the moment, we'll keep you updated as, as we find out, as you find out what's happening this year. Just know that all the staff at Heath Primary School and especially us here in Key Stage 1, we just really want your child to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. 
we're happy to work with you to achieve this. So any concerns, please message us on Dojo, uh, arrange an appointment for us to have a chat if you need one. Um, we really want to do what's best for your child.